Welcome everyone for being here today. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm go going to talk for about half an hour about how to be an efficient storage provider in Europe. So I, I prepared a, slout, a, a slide about one of the first days we, we started with Filecoin up until today and the whole journey from A to B. So, on the left you can see my partner, Wijnand Schouten, and on the right you can see me, uh, Hit Hoogland, and we together formed Decent, one of the largest European storage providers, around two and a half years ago. We actually met because I was running a large-scale GPU farm back in the days, and Wijnand was one of the largest pool owners in the Netherlands, and by accident he emailed me back on a question with his private email. I saw what his business experience was in the field, namely he was the co-founder of Eveka, one of the largest USB operators in the Netherlands. And I looked him up on LinkedIn and I saw, I think I need to chat with this guy. There might perhaps be a really good partnership in the future. So a week later we met and we never split apart. All the businesses we did afterwards were together and we eventually, three years later after our meeting, we found it decent. So, here's a little explanation about the complete journey we made as a storage provider in the, in the space. Um, it was quite interesting for many years. First of all, building a GPU farm from nothing to six and a half thousand GPUs in one building was amazing. Second of all, selling that, revamping the whole building into a private data center was an amazing experience. So, um, the first thing, you can see here in the picture, I'm happy the screen is bigger now. Uh, we were running one of the largest remaining Ethereum mining GPU farms in the Netherlands. We've been running that in this area specifically from end of 2017 till early 2021. Uh, at the end of a bull market, and at the end of a bull market we sold it, but in the mid middle time we have two and a half years of bear market, which was really horrible to sustain this with the electricity prices and the low Ethereum price, but we managed to do it, and we even managed to sell it for a slight profit, so we were really happy we could. Um, after the uh, sale of the GPU farm, we started improving the building that we were in. We actually bought the place, it's about 1,200 square meters, and we bought the building and we started revamping the whole structure. We started building new walls, as you can see here. We started revamping the ceiling, changing out the floors, the doors, the security structures, everything was redone. Um, really important slide for me to add is family assistance. Um, my dad actually helped me, I think at least half the way of doing the whole uh, rebuilding of the data center. And one of the things he did and we loved most was he actually painted every single wall three times uh, to make it perfect. Uh, he was doing that for months, but the, the fact that you can work with family, for me, was amazing. The, the period was lovely. Um, next step was the ceiling. We needed to redo the in t entire ceiling because the building was quite old. All the ceiling tiles were already 20 to 30 years old. There was a lot of gunk above the ceiling from old, sh old ventilation shafts, old water pipelines, and if you want to construct a safe data center, everything needs to go out. So we destroyed everything, and we redone the whole ceiling and the whole uh, data center. Then one of the most important parts about building a data center, you can have the power, you can have the space, you can have the intelligence. If you don't have the network, you can't run a data center. So we started chatting with local ISPs about what the solutions were. Can we get a 10 gigabyte line? Can we get a 50 gigabyte line? What are the options? What are the prices? And eventually we decided to use our co-location in Amsterdam. And we just rented a dark fiber line between our co-location space in, uh, in one of our uh, data centers in Amsterdam and just dug it out to the new data center in Hirigewaard, it's about 50 kilometers above Amsterdam. And because of that dark fiber, we are able to sustain, at the moment, 100 gigabyte uploads and downloads directly between those two locations. For us, it's truly important because you're not going to run a large SP on a one gigabyte internet line. 
Then we imported a lot of materials from Asia, actually. All the racks and the floor tiles are from the same construction company in Asia. Uh, it took about six months for them to build, construct and ship it. And it was in the middle of the Corona time when the shipping prices went sky high. So we overpaid the transport by a huge margin, but we were happy it eventually arrived. So we started to do all the floor work. Then we started to do uh, to implement all the racks. We initially purchased 40 racks. We later added another 20, and we still have place for another 80 racks in the same region. But we, if we don't, if we're not going to utilize them, we did we didn't buy them yet. So as you can see, we have two uh, CACs, cold aisle containment structures, right there. Uh, the reason for that is all reason for the presentation: efficiency. It's way more efficient to have two dedicated cold aisle containment systems where you only need to cool the floor between the racks, which is contained in this rack, instead of cooling a complete cold aisle or a complete uh, or the complete data center room itself. So the efficiency of, the, of these structures are way higher than we would normally have with, without containing the cold air. Um, after that was finished, you can even see the uh, LED lights. We implement LED in the whole DC just to give it a little extra edge. And we then build the office area. It's on top of the data center, so we work on top of the DC itself. And we mm, it's a little old picture, but we try to implement as much plants as we can to give you the Falcon green vibe there. And the last thing we did about the building was completed about four months ago. You can see it on the last uh, page. We implemented almost 800 solar panels on the roof of the building just to try and become as efficient as we can because the lower the cost, the longer we can sustain a bad market or a bear market or what, whatever is th thrown at us. So we are really proud to be that efficient with that many panels. And we even rented all the uh, different colored ones, the light ones. We even rented the roof of our neighbors for 10 years to be able to implement them. So, a, li a, li a little bit backtracking on the evolution of Decent. Uh, how did we go from GPU farm partnership to Decent? The story is actually pretty simple. Um, we knew that GPU mining, Ethereum mining, proof-of-work mining in Europe was a dead end. I've been doing that since the early days of Bitcoin and looking at ASICs, looking at developments, looking at power costs in Europe. Um, we are outcompeted by uh, other countries by a fair and large margin. Uh, we were lucky to hit two bull markets, but during the bear markets it's unable to sustain these operations. So we are always looking for the next blockchain project that will be interesting enough to spend time and money on and it might be the next project we'll, where we will th thrive on so we were looking for other projects proof of work project we've even tried zilliqa on a really large scale with, with our gpus for a while we tried to run bnb nodes we tried to do a lot of stuff but nothing was really really interesting enough for us to fully dive on until one of our friends elio told us about Filecoin that was back in the early summer of 2020 and he told us like hey I know we're in a bear market I know you're having struggles with operating the farm but just watch out in a few months from now there's a new uh, life net and a new mainnet going to be launched of a coin uh, that is launched a few years ago with an ICO the name is Filecoin and it might perhaps be bigger than Ethereum one day so please watch out, go invest, uh, see what you can find, and you might be able to pull off a small, a small hardware operation just to check if it's something f for you. So we initially, initially started with the two Pepebibad configuration. There was before the launch of the mainnet, and when the, when the mainnet launched, we were extremely interesting. The revenue was pretty well, and we decided to go all in to Filecoin. So the slide you just saw, about the time we sold the farm, we were already running the two Pebbybyte operation on Filecoin as a demo. And when we decided to sell the farm and do the building, we also decided to go all in on Filecoin. So two things that 
separates us from regular SP operations. The immense solar array that we are running, which is, we, I'm really proud of that, but there's one big difference between us and normal SP operations. As far as I'm aware of, we are one of the only SPs who are actually owners of the data center where they co-locate it. If you don't own the data center, running a s solar array on top of the roof is going to be pretty difficult. So we, we understand that, but we're still extremely proud to have this many panels on the roof. And the second part was just launched three months ago, just before the summer. Uh, that's a battery storage system that we are testing now, together with the partnership with Falcon Green. And we're trying to make our operation fully renewable. And I will show you more details later, but those two things set us apart from regular SP operations. So, uh, about our solar panel installation. We started discussing this option with the Falcon Green team back in 2021, back in October when they launched. We started talking with Alan from Falcon Green and we started discussing potential methods on making our s operation more sustainable. What are the options do we have? Can we make maybe a wind farm? Can we do a solar farm? Can we do batteries? And the first easiest and cheapest solution back then was the solar installation. So we went to th through the numbers. We're talking about how many. We eventually could place 300 solar panels on our own roof. And we immediately started with that installation. And it was finished early 2022. Um, about six months later, we started chatting with Alan again, telling him, we are trying to build this out even further. So we started talking about what the options were. And there was a choice made to uh, increase the amount of solar panels and install a battery system. So we finished that early summer this year. Um, at the moment, as this beautiful graph show you, uh, this is the daily usage. It's a month ago. It's the 10th of June. But this is a daily graph of our power usage. So the total power going into the DC and the total outflux during the sunny times in midday. So you can clearly see here that this is the day where we use about 2100 kilowatt hours and we generate about 1900 kilowatt hours. So we are almost as if we are almost generating the same amount of electricity as we use during the day. And yes, during the night we need to purchase the kilowatts from the grid which is great. But we also purchase wind racks to offset those uses as well. And all the electricity that flows out of our solar panels back into the grid, we get racks from our supplier. So uh, I'm really proud of this because we're almost there. So uh, the second half of this operation is a battery system. Uh, we, we eventually chose to work with Growot due to them being one of the only real experienced uh, small medium to enterprise battery suppliers in Europe. Uh, there are p possibilities to buy large scale battery systems from Asia, from China, but there are uh, regulatory problems in Europe for running them and doing that inside a data center is not a smart move. So we started working with Growart because they had the uh, possibilities to also give us a warranty and our insurance company also agreed to work with them. So that's the main reason. Um, the battery system is only 125 kilowatt hours, meaning we can run about one and a half hours with the complete uh, data center on those batteries. It's not enough. The night takes eight hours, I know. But this was already pretty expensive and it's a demo. So we love to go to about a megawatt in the next one or two years to be able to offset also the whole night with solar from during the day. That will be the ideal solution. The main problem with this is it's awesome as a backup. It's awesome to showcase, but there is no way to make any revenue on those battery systems. It's about a 10 year life cycle and you need about 10 years to, to, to make ROI on them. So r right now, with the current prices of battery systems, there's no reason for us to quickly expand it. Uh, as with the solar panels, you can make re revenue in about a year or four to five. Uh, with the battery systems, it's not yet there. But 
Growat is working on a lot of new systems with more capacity and more offload capacity. So we will be working closely with them to see what will happen in the next in the in the next few months. This is the actual battery room. Um, those are about 30 kilowatt hours, a little bit more per unit. Um, th these are all connected to hybrid solar inverters, which of course use the uh, generated uh, uh, solar power for about between 9 a.m. and 12 a.m. in the morning, and they charge the complete battery system, and during the rest of the day, they just offload it to the grid. And then in the evening, I might be able to show you on this chart. You can see right there, in the evening, it starts discharging for a maximum of those 125 kilowatts and then it shoots back up into my re regular usage. The reason why we have this right now is because those hours are the most expensive hours in the Netherlands, and we pay per hour, so we can see one day ahead of time what the power cost of tomorrow will be, and nine out of 10 times between eight and 10 p.m. is the most expensive time to buy electricity. So that's the, that's the time we offload our battery systems. So, I already talked shortly about our collaboration with Falco and Green, and Alan, and Mark, and Mocha, and we really like to work with them. We've done a lot of things with them, but the main f focus point is transparency. We are sending all our power invoices, we are sending the graphs you just saw from our export and import, we're sending it right directly to them through an API. We are also now working on sending all the metrics and information from all of the PC1, PC2, and storage machines directly to Falco and Green, so they can use all the metrics to make a better system of showcasing how much energy the Falco network is using. We're actually one of their first and one of their only direct uh, 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 partners who are fully transparent on everything that we do. So it's, uh, we have weekly or monthly calls just to talk about how we can make the transparency even better. Uh, we've been talking about potentially reswapping all of the PDUs in our data center, linking all the PDUs to devices which they have access to, and then showcasing the actual usage so you also skip the inefficiency of a PDU, for example. Um, there is a continuous collaboration on making these points better and more transparent. And uh, the further we go, the more insights they have on how efficient an SP can run. Uh, next to the solar and the batteries, there's of course a lot more you can do. Um, there are a few experts here also in the room who, who know how to build a really efficient mining operation. Uh, but this is purely what we have been doing. Um, the more efficient our operation run, the lower Falcon prices we can able to sustain. The longer a bear market takes, the longer we can survive, the better it is. So, one of the first things we did running about 60, 30, 90s in our data center at me maximum usage 24 seven, we lowered the power limits. We lowered the power limits from about 350 watts per GPU to 200, 220. Uh, the reason for that is really simple. 3090s aren't the most efficient cards. Uh, they were cheaper than the A5000 or the A6000 when we started. They are, they are pretty, pretty damn fast, but they are power hungry and hot. So. The data center, when we went full PC2 and C2 for a few hours, was getting heated quite quickly. So we figured out pretty soon, if we lowered the maximum power usage to about 50% less, we only lose 10% of our PC2 times, which was fairly acceptable for us, having enough machines to run those jobs, and we saved a lot of power. And also, because the, the whole area was a little bit cooler, we can reduce the air conditioning, which also saves per power. So it was a, a great first move. The second thing we did is invested in only and only 18 terabyte drives or higher. 18 or 20 now, because the 20 terabyte drives are getting cheaper by the day. Um, this saves a lot of energy. If you're running 10 terabytes, 8 terabytes, 6 terabyte drives, you're using four to six times more power per terabyte they are running when, you, you, when you're buying larger drives. Second to that, we only buy Seagate. We have a really good partnership with Seagate. Um, and the efficiency of the Seagate drives, when you have them slightly above spin down, is between four and six watts. 
which for us is extremely acceptable, having a lot of uh, capacity now. We are over 100 pebibytes of QAP. Uh, having these drives at a, a, few, a few watts each saves us a lot of heat, a lot of power, and uh, brings our OPEX cost down to a reasonable level. Uh, the third thing we did was all our head nodes who are controlling all of our JBOTs with all of our storage were a little bit older devices. Um, they were all running uh, fourth than G Xeon GPUs. We're using about 125 watt each and they were dual CPU systems. And we started looking at our uh, ZFS usage on those CPUs. It was close to nothing. So we eventually decided to go with a second-hand partner and we bought a few hundred of the low wattage CPU systems or the CPUs with eight cores running at f 50 watts. We swapped out all the CPUs. We saved about two to three kilowatts on total usage and the effect was the systems were running the same. So it was a smart move. Lastly, um, as most of you probably know, work with Supermicro. Uh, most of their uh, servers are either running on automatic or on high fan speed uh, or on somewhere in between. Uh, not all of those uh, systems, uh, none of the IPMI systems are that smart. So what we did is we implemented software that automatically increases fan speed looking at the hard drive temperature, which is also pr pretty useful because those fans are pretty powerful. So, um, another thing I'm really proud of is our uh, monthly OPEX per pebibyte of QAP. For us, this is the only metric that really, really counts. We can all measure the revenue, we can all measure how much money we, uh, Falcons we can loan, we can all measure a lot of things that are important, but for us as a business to run a storage provider which needs to make money, this is a really important number. How much dollar do you pay per month per pebibyte on, of on-chain power to stay alive? Well, the number right now is $450 per pebibyte of QAP. This was more than $900 in January. We have been expanding our operation uh, qu quite heavily without increasing the OPEX too much and with these costs per pebibyte per month, we can able to sustain for the, for the next year at the current low prices and the current low minting of the network of Filecoin. This is for us extremely, extremely helpful. So what does the future look like for Decent? Um, as I already told you, we have been experimenting with the battery systems. Uh, Growot is releasing new systems with way more capacity for a cheaper price end of summer. Uh, I think the delivery time will be more than half a year, but we will be talking with them on adding more capacity because the more capacity we can add for a cheaper price, uh, the lower the monthly uh, payment per Q QAP of power will, will be for us. The second thing is there's a lot of software improvements right now on the Falco network. Uh, one of the r most recent one was the Golden Gate uh, improvement. Um, we are still new to this, but these are way more efficient than our current ceiling pipeline. So implementing these changes, we, we m might be able to re reduce our hardware and therefore reduce our monthly OPEX again. We are also working with ceiling as a source providers like uh, Aligned, uh, Gr Greater Heat is also uh, trying to run demos with us. And there's a few more l large enterprises who are now jumping into the ceiling as a service. Um, for us, this is really interesting, looking at the price we need to pay per terabyte and the fact that we have no compute usage in our DC when we externally uh, 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 l let it be done by an entity like Aligned within USA. So if the price is right, SaaS can also drive down the monthly cost of your operation. And of course, lastly, we will always be looking at more and efficient ways to run our operation as we'd like to remain the most renewable storage provider in the ecosystem at the moment. That was everything. Uh, I hope you have some qu questions for me. There might be some questions online. And if there is not, then uh,
thank you uh, very much. Uh, what's next for us? Um, there's a lot of things going on in the community right now that are really, really important for the survival of storage providers. Um, looking at projects like Falcon Plus, looking at network effects like QAP, looking at the revenue uh, downfall since we hit baseline minting. There's so many things now going on that are important. Our main focus is on trying to stay as cheap as possible to be able to sustain longer than all our partners and, and competitors so we can stay in this ecosystem while on the other side trying to resolve all these problems at hand one by one. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>